Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 we will be discussing a topic related to communication and interaction and the lecture is going to base on effective classroom communication this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor nasreen mujib from aligarh muslim university aligarh this video is produced under the project dth swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we are going to discuss a topic which is related to communication and interaction and the lecture is going to base on the effective classroom communication it's a very interesting topic because the entire classroom process depends on the effective classroom communication let us start the session first with the objectives the objectives of this session are to discuss the essential requirements of achieving effectiveness in the classroom communication and to elaborate the features of the components of effective classroom communication let us discuss that how we can achieve effectiveness in classroom communication effective communication is the essential requirement for having an effective interaction or getting maximum advantage from the process the entire process which is happening in the form of communication so in this way the degree of its effectiveness can be judged from the amount of advantages drawn through this process now the question arises that what should be done for realizing the utmost effectiveness in communication and if we try to answer this question it will be very much uh, clearly said that very well linked with the attempts in improving each component or element which is involved in the process of communication is going to give us the result which is can consider to be an effective classroom communication so all the components of uh, uh, the effective communication or all the elements should come together to create a very kind of excellent communication process let us now try to make out or call out all those ways and means which are very much responsible for bringing efficiency in the nature and working of all these uh, components or all those elements which are considered to be the components of an effective uh, communication the first and the foremost component is the source of communication communications effectiveness very much depends upon the strength and qualities of its source and you can see as a teacher you can find that all the students notice that what exactly is the strength of their teacher are their teacher able to prove themselves as an effective source of communication there are few teachers who are actually very good in communicating but there are others who fail in the process which is being followed in the classroom so what are their strengths and the qualities which the students actually notice to be considered as a successful communicator if we try to call out some of these there can be uh, maybe we can say that the first one can be that their proper knowledge of the subject matter content or field of information the second can be the confidence in their knowledge and the stock of information because at times what happens that the teacher is knowing the subject matter but the teacher is not in a position or is not having the right amount of confidence to communicate it well 
the third is the name and fame which this, this teacher is uh, having which is going to regard as the credibility of this teacher as a good teacher so this is something which can be a little bit controversial if there is a new teacher who has come to teach you but this is also one of the factors which is very much important we have got some sort of image of all our teachers so once a teacher enters in the students get to uh, be very like uh, they are in a mood now that my teacher has come and now she is going to communicate she is going to teach the topic and they become like uh, they they try to be in a good mood or in a bad mood because they know their teacher and the credibility of this teacher as a good teacher is proven or on the contrary is not proven so that is the the third factor then their way of communicating and interacting with the students this is something which is very very important and then the impact of their overall behavior and the personality so in this way the personality characteristics and the potential in terms of the content and presentation of communication they all actually are going to count very much for the effectiveness of a person as a communicator and in case of the teachers lawyers political and religious leaders actors actors and actresses then artists writers or authors and any other person who wants to communicate their feelings thoughts and ideas they all always try to imbibe all the essential virtues and the qualities of an effective communicator without being an effective communicator all these professionals are not going to make an impact on their audiences so this is something which is very very important for the successful careers of these professionals if we talk about any actor or actress or maybe the model we can see that they dress themselves in a way which can make him or her an effective source of attraction so they they try to dress themselves to to attract the attention of the audiences they give proper attention to their physical and mental health and uh, they they all actually work a lot on their personality traits to make them as most appealing a lot of attraction is inculcated and uh, they also try to make themselves acceptable source of communication they also try to say uh, like when they are talking in public they try to follow all those rules and norms which are actually desired in a person in that type of situations so in the same way it is also required to be there like all those communication effectiveness things are also desired in a good teacher and uh, maybe if a person who is uh, in politics or in any other uh, walk of life the the effective communication is the key of their success so we can say that if we are trying to achieve success in any of the areas in fact in the case of teaching and learning th this is also true that if we are trying to become a good teacher or a good student this communication effectiveness is something which we have to achieve so that we can satisfy our audiences by our good communication and by the appeal which is there in our personality which is uh, which makes a package and uh, the presentability and the effect which is coming out from the uh, speech all these things all together make uh, an effective teacher who is in a position to effectively communicate his or her ideas the next component is the communication material the effectiveness of a communication process in any classroom situation very much depends on the quality and the nature of the communication material the material which is being used as uh, the text like maybe in few of the cases there must be some reference books or textbooks or some uh, journals articles or anything 
So if the content and message has some attraction, force and value for the receiver, let's take here in this case the student, it will surely catch the attention and make them quite attentive and an active participant in the communication process. But you just imagine the situation which is just on the contrary. If there is nothing new or novel or valuable in the message, then the piece of instruction which is imparted by the teacher will neither attract nor motivate the students to take genuine interest for becoming active partner in the ongoing classroom communication. They will be very much passive because they are not getting any sort of attraction or motivation by the piece of knowledge which is being imparted by the teacher. So therefore, it is the prime duty of all the communicators to think seriously about the quality and nature of the content or the material and the message which is given, which is actually to be given to the receivers. And as far as possible, it should be quite relevant to their needs, their interests, their previous background, the previous knowledge which we they are uh, they are actually getting while coming to this class, the mental horizon, and the communication level. So these things are to be taken care of. And if we try to just make a kind of uh, brief account, we can say that if there lies strength and effectiveness in the communication material, it will automatically penetrate into the eyes and ears of the receivers for the meaningful interpretation, understanding and response on their part. So we have to be very careful. If we are the teachers, we have to be very careful while uh, gathering the content. We have to think of that this content which we are in, uh, providing to our students Communicating to our students should be up to the mark and should be of the uh, exact difficulty level, which uh, which can be comprehended by our students in a proper way. Otherwise, there will be no any use of the communication which can't be comprehended by the students in the process or the classroom process or any of the uh, communication imparting process. The next is the communication media or channel. What exactly it means? The communication media or channel just lie in between the source and the receiver, like a bridge or connecting link. What the source of communication says or shows to the receivers can be done only with the help of some or the other either verbal or non-verbal communication channels. The nature and quality of the traffic uh, which is flowing on this bridge is very much dependent on the appropriateness, strength and quality of the bridge. And similarly, the effectiveness and the strength of the communication flow between the communicator and the receiver surely depends upon the nature and quality of the verbal and non-verbal means. And the media and channels enjoyed in the process of communication. So you can just think of like if a teacher is uh, te teaching and she is not uh, actually using any of the mannerisms or very static and, uh, and she is just sitting or standing and speaking up, speaking up, then the interest of the students uh, is going to be very less or you can say that they will be not much interested. But if the teacher is very uh, lively and she is trying to uh, to make a proper connection between the students and the teacher itself then the process is going to become very alive and for this purpose uh, there are some things or some uh, uh, important uh, points which we can keep in mind let us see that what exactly those points are we have to use the language that is quite known like we we cannot go for using jargons or very complicated language which is uh, very difficult to be understood uh, by the receivers so we have to use simple language in the classroom which can be 
understand it, uh, like it, which can be understood by the students. Then the verbal means should be supported by the non-verbal cues, gestures, body language, physical movements, eye la like eye language, or maybe some of those uh, symbolic uh, symbolic gestures uh, for giving the required strength and effectiveness to the process of communication. At times, we make uh, certain faces when we are teaching. Like at times, we smile, we we use uh, some some sort of uh, facial expressions to give a lot of emphasis on the topic which is being taught. So these are all the parts of the effective communication. Then to reduce the ill effects of verbalisms, attempts should be made to make use of audiovisual aid material and appliances which are suitable to the very nature and timings of the communication. Verbalisms is basically considered to be that if we are talking a lot about a particular uh, topic, it will be difficult to be understood by the students. But if we show them uh, some sort of analogies, if we show them some examples in the form of some audio and visual material, it will be easier for them to, uh, to understand. So that is why we say that uh, on the place of talking or using a lot of verbal communication, we can show them some of the audio and visual uh, aid or material which is suitable and which is available at the time of the communication. Then the essential skills should be learned well both by the communicators and the receivers for drawing the maximum advantage through the communication. Then as a communicator, you never use that media or means for the communication that is not capable of conveying what is intended by you. Like just for the sake of using a media or a means, a means of communication should be avoided. You, you should go for uh, the, that particular means or media only when it is required. So just if you are having a video or some good uh, movie clip, and it is not required in the classroom, you should not go for showing it. So it should always be within the, uh, within the reach and comprehension of the receivers so that the chain of proper encoding and decoding can be continuously maintained. They, they have to understand. They, like if the encoding is proper, then we should ensure as a teacher that the decoding is also uh, getting properly done. And then only we are successful in communicating a proper session or a proper lecture. So then we have to have variety, novelty, and creativity in making use of different means and media for the communication. Always we have to prefer to go for multimedia approach over the single or the limited usual means of media. So when we are using multimedia or multiple means of media, then uh, a lot of sense organs, like many of the sense organs are being utilized and learning is going to become an effective uh, and uh, more and more uh, effective here in this particular case when the multimedia approach is being used rather than using the single media approach. Then the next is the receiver of the communication. So we can say that the initiator of the communication process is the source of communication and here the person can be considered to be as the communicator. The receiver lies on the other hand for actualizing the process of communication. So we cannot say that without this receiver the process is going to complete because what for what purpose we are making this communication? so that the receiver can actually attain whatever we are trying to communicate. So actually, what is done through communication is always intended for the benefit of the receiver. A communication can only be carried out effectively with the receiver's active involvement and cooperation. And if we are not getting 
or uh, the the receiver is not interested or not capable of receiving and understanding the meaning of the message or uh, he or she does not respond in the proper way for maintaining the flow of communication the communication will turn into one sided affair and it is going to lose its purpose and significance and in this way the actual key of effective classroom communication lies with the receiver this is something which we have to understand very properly we can't think of that only being a good teacher is going to uh, to serve the purpose we have to see that how we are uh, as a good teacher we are going to uh, to make our students ready to learn law of readiness which is the first law it says that first thing the the battle is half won if you have made your students ready to learn so if we are saying that uh, for the effective classroom communication the success lies with the communicator and the receiver both then what are those characteristics which a good receiver should be having so we have to see that what are those particular characteristics which on um, we ca we can actually uh, see or follow on several occasions for making the communication efforts of the communicator most fruitful and commendable like if we are not uh, seeking this particular uh, characteristics or the list of those characteristics which are desired in a good receiver then there is a possibility that the entire communication Uh, goes with a lot of slackness or deficiencies, and there are hurdles in terms of the use of proper media and channel of communication. So, all these things can make the process of communication very faulty. So, let us try to see that what are those characteristics which we have to have in the receivers, or we have to inculcate in the receivers. Uh, so that the process of communication can become the effective classroom communication can be considered as the effective classroom communication so the first point is that the receivers must have sufficient previous knowledge and the general background for receiving and understanding the communicated message they should not be uh, like ignorant about that topic which is to be communicated there should be some premise building or they should be having some sort of general knowledge or general background so we have always uh, we should always go for a background check then the receivers must have the required proficiency and abilities in terms of the communication skills such as the listening skills observing skills reading writing speaking mapping drawing surveying measuring thinking uh, synthesizing and before synthesizing obviously we have to analyze evaluating and drawing inferences so these are some of the required proficiencies and abilities in terms of communication um, to get a proper communication skill these are those capabilities which are very much required then they must have the skill and potential required for the use of various modes media and means of communication their sense organs should be well adapted to the use of various audio visual aids or materials and the appliances they must remain quite alert and attentive for receiving the intended message and provide essential response for giving the required feedback to the communicator for carrying out the chain of communication they must show proper uh, enthusiasm uh, they should be very much motivated they should show the zeal curiosity as well as need for maintaining the chain of communication they should be very much interested this is something which is very much desired they must not put themselves into a passive recipient of the information or message given by the communicator but should make themselves uh, the active uh, participants or inquirers and active partners in the process of communication
there are a lot of uh, media of communication. We have just uh, saw that uh, this these media of communication are very much important. And uh, it's a well-known fact that a teacher who can communicate well is bound to get success in the uh, like uh, teaching learning process. If it is in group, then also the teacher is going to be successful uh, among the group. So this success is quite dependent upon the success of the learner's power of communication. And in turn, the success of the task very much depends on the appropriateness of the media of communication. There are various means and uh, methods and uh, forms of media of, for communication, but uh, we will be discussing in detail about these forms and means in another session. So we all should be aware of that the forms and the different media of communication are another very, very important element of the effective communication process. With this, now we have reached to the end. Let us try to recapitulate what we have studied uh, in this session. Uh, in order to achieve effectiveness in the classroom communication, a teacher should always try to concentrate over the increasing uh, effects, or you can say that the effectiveness of all the constituents or factors involved in the process of communication. What are these uh, particular uh, constituents or the uh, elements? Uh, we have seen that the first component is the communicator or the teacher. The second can be the communication material. Or here, in this case, the subject matter, uh, which is being presented in the class. Then the third is the communication media or channel, of which here is the method or the techniques adopted for presenting the subject matter. Uh, we can also say that the pedagogy basically uh, is also uh, the part of this media or channel. Then the receiver of the communication. And here, in this case, the students of the class, the audiences, they are the receiver of the communication. And the next one is the situation and the conditions or the environmental situations prevailing in the classroom at the time of exchange of the communication. So all these are the responsible factors, or you can say that the constituents which are responsible for making a one communication process transforming into an effective communication process inside the classroom and even outside the classroom. If all the components are readily working and are good in shape, then we can say that the effective classroom communication process or outside classroom communication process can be possible. So this was all about today. Uh, these are few of those references and suggested further links, which can be used for enhancing your knowledge in the area. For uh, if you want to know more about the topic, you can go for reading these uh, textbooks and the material uh, which are listed here. For today, it, this is all about and uh, we will be meeting another time, another day, uh, in another session. Thank you so much. Dear students, you are watching a video on communication and interaction. And in this lecture, we discussed about the effective classroom communication. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.